Good afternoon. Um, my name is Enes Karastan. I'm a PhD candidate uh, at University of Central Florida. In the Safer Sim project, uh, although I'm the main author, we a lot of people contributed. Uh, Dr. Mehdi Nuri from MIT, uh, Dr. Jay Young Lee, uh, Dr. Ling Wan, and our department chair, Dr. Abdel Ate, Ate also contributed. And my advisor, Dr. Remar Tatari, uh, helped me to uh, build this project. Um, let me give a brief outline of, of this webinar, this presentation. I'll, I will briefly give some introduction uh, and mention why mention the electric vehicle safety concerns uh, in terms of uh, pedestrian and cyclists. And I will also talk about how agent-based modeling can be used to address these concerns. Um, I will in detail may, uh, talk about the methodology, how we created the traffic simulation framework, uh, I'll talk about how vehicle pedestrian interaction is is in, in, is coded in this framework, and we perform some sens sensitivity analysis. We repeated the simulation nine thousand times. We gather some important results, and I will share those at the end. Let me talk about the electric. What is the concern about electric vehicle? Uh, when operated at low speeds, electric and hybrid vehicles have created pedestrian safety concerns, especially in the city centers, because these vehicles have relatively silent engines compared to uh, internal combustion vehicles, and resulting in safety issues for pedestrians and cyclists, because lack of engine noise uh, is not able to create uh, a warning for the uh, warning from the electric ve oncoming vehicles uh, national highway transportation safety agency called these vehicles the quieter cars in the 2009 report uh, which the report concluded that the hybrid vehicles are uh, hybrid electric vehicles are actually twice more likely to be involved in a pedestrian crash than internal combustion engine vehicles. This report, however, was updated in 2011 with more extensive data by adding crash files reported to the state database in recent years. According to the report, accident rates are highly dependent on vehicle speed, maneuvering, and location, but the largest difference be between the involvement rates of Electric and I, electric vehicle and ISAVs in pedestrian uh, crashes is observed when the average vehicle speed is less than 35 miles per hour during low speed maneuvers and when pedestrians are on the roadway. Uh, NHTSA has also performed another extensive study on quieter cars posing that poses a safety risk for blind pedestrians. The second study uh, including included two phases of research. The first phase uh, determined the overall sound levels and general spectral content for selection of hybrid electric vehicle and internal combustion vehicles under different operating conditions as well as the evaluation of the detectability for low and high ambient sound levels. The second phase proposed potential specifications for vehicle sound levels to be used in electric vehicles. So there are many factors affecting pedestrian traffic safety, including relative illumination of the traffic environment, pedestrian and driver behaviors, vehicle technology, vehicle and ambient sound levels, vehicle traffic density, traffic flow speed, traffic signage, and so many other applicable factors. And some of some of these factors can be linked to the vehicle itself, uh, and some of them can be linked to the driver behavior. Since e and we know that EV drivers are at higher economic level and are therefore more likely to have received better education, and therefore they demonstrate more careful traffic behavior. 
Additionally, higher internal car noise increases driver's risk-taking from cancelling. On the other hand, the relative silence of the average EV's engine will make it less detectable by on oncoming pedestrians and therefore more likely to be involved in collisions. So EVs, since EV adoption, electric vehicles uh, has both positive and negative impacts on the pedestrian's traffic safety. The overall resulting effect can be investigated with an agent-based modeling approach. Agent-based modeling, named the ABM, is, is a new approach to computational modeling. Uh, and ABM has gained significant attention over the past 10, 10 years because our models, our simulations become really complex. And ABM is really useful when there are interacting agents and factors that simultaneously affect each other. And, it, and ABM models are widely now applied to topics such as market analysis, organizational decision making, energy analysis, air control traffic, and in, in our case we simulated a traffic environment. So this is a description of our simulation framework. We define our agents, electric vehicles, internal combustion engine vehicles, and pedestrians. We define parameters that could affect the pedestrian and safety of the uh, traffic safety of the pedestrians. These are ambient sound level, ambient illumination, vehicle sound level, vehicle speed, and driver perception. Um, we coded our near crash algorithm for the simulation uh, and we define a simulation time which was one year in our case and simulation speed also a visual and we created a visual environment a 3d visual environment uh, to observe carefully uh, whether uh, the simulation uh, works naturally looks natural um, we perform, as I said, sensitivity analysis as well. We our parameters here. We put some par sensitivity uh, so that we can also cover some uncertainty in our simulation. And these parameters uh, sensitivity also link to a probability distributions. Uh, the simulation was com highly computationally intensive, so we use cluster computers to be able to run this simulation uh, for one year. Uh, in the output, we received some uh, crash counts, near crash counts, belonging to electric vehicles and internal combustion engine vehicles. So this is the traffic simulation model in this study simulates a simple real-world signalized traffic intersection environment. The, these, the images and other visual entities here uh, used to represent this intersection are taken from downtown area in Orlando, Florida. Uh, the signalized intersection connects four-lane undivided urban roadways with a maximum speed limit of 30 miles per hour and there are four uncontrolled pedestrian crossings located near the uh, there is two of them are uh, are far from the intersection area and two of them are relatively close to the intersection we use any logic software to to simulate this environment also create the agent based model all these three agents are uh, electric vehicle internal combustion engine vehicle and pedestrians uh, have initially empty populations uh, but are created within the environment by the readily available source blocks so in logic at the road traffic library we could create visual markups we could define the driver behavior change the vehicle properties but we mostly 
coded uh, important features properties in the Java using the JavaScript. Also, any logic allows you to interactively change the parameters. So we put our user interface uh, the dynamic uh, a control but system that we can dynamically change and observe uh, the parameters here. So this is the simulation we ultimately created. Um, basically, when we click on run, uh, the simulation environment loads, and you can see a three D. Visualization appears. You can increase the speed of the simulation um, and you can check whether uh, agents are properly created uh, in the 2D window as well. So, in the 2D window, we can observe better. How the in agents are interacting with each other. We can show the traffic density. Um, also, when we go to logic part, uh, we can see the agent interactions. We can monitor their uh, values. We can see our parameters here. And we can uh, run the simulation at the highest speed. Uh, and we can couple with uh, sensitivity analysis and run the same simulation uh, over 10,000 times. We can, as I said, we can interactively change the, uh, our, our parameters that affect the uh, near crashes. Really, visual environment is, is important because we can see uh, if there's something wrong, if there is something that doesn't look right. So this is the logic chart for car objects in our in our model. Uh, we define how car objects interacting with each other. We use the agent blocks in the Road traffic library of any logic. The car source object basically generates cars, and the car move to object basically you define where the car moves. Uh, and in the dispose, you basically remove the car from the remove the agent uh, from the model. And we have some additional queue modeling, some agent distribution modeling. The same thing also is, is done for pedestrians, uh, queue modeling and pedestrian defined, we define pedestrian flows. Uh, we, you can also use services in the, from the pedestrian library. So these are all the parameters, variables, functions, and, and the agents we use in the model. Uh, these are our agents. We define a near crash accident event, basically this in this event, every uh, the system, the simulation checks whether there's a near crash uh, five times a second. These are the parameters basically vehicle flow rates, illumination level, uh, ambient sound level. We, we define our functions that affect the that uses the parameters here. So this is an interaction diagram that shows how the vehicle interacts with the pedestrian. Um, the individual agent behavior is dependent on the interaction between other agents. Basically, a vehicle agent yields to the pedestrian agent and begins deceleration from a safe stopping distance. 
on the other hand, pedestrian agents perceive an incoming vehicle from an auditory perception distance when they fail to perceive by sight. Similar vehicle-pedestrian agent interaction models were used in the literature. These, uh, we basically implemented some of the literature work here as well. So in this interaction diagram, basically the system checks whether there is a vehicle on the road. If there is a vehicle, it determines whether it's an EV or ISEV. Uh, it calculates sight stopping distance uh, based on the vehicle properties and driving they have uh, other parameters we define. And it checks whether there is a pedestrian on the crossing uh, and check whether the pedestrian crossing is less than the sight stopping distance. Uh, if it is less than, then it sends a stop signal to the driver and we check whether the vehicle was able to stop on time. Uh, if not, and if the pedestrian is on the same lane and the same location, we name it as a near crash. This is how the pedestrian uh, interacts in the model. Uh, The pedestrian basically, if, if it is uh, less than the uh, auditory detection distance, um, the pedestrian waits until the vehicle passes. Um, but it is larger than, then it enters, and, and then you can observe a near crash accident. So, pseudo code basically that. Uh, algorithmically explains the behavior. So we coded in everything in Java, of course, it's much more compl complicated than this. Uh, basically, the near crash algorithm scans through all of the vehicle's objects in the simulation window and it achieves their location of each near crash event. If one or more vehicles is present inside a crosswalk while a pedestrian is crossing the road, and then the event is reported as a crash for the corresponding vehicle type. Furthermore, the pedestrians who fail to see the, the approaching vehicle but detected by hearing will stop if, if the vehicle has passed the auditory de detectability distance. We, as I said, we implemented some of the literature work. Uh, Emerson et al. Emerson and others have uh, has, have done some quite important work here. Uh, it basically applied a uh, regression analysis uh, for different vehicle types, and they calculated the uh, forward detection distance and crossing margins. The forward detection distance was defined as the distance from the approaching vehicle to the test participant at the time when the participant pulls a trigger, the detection trigger. The crossing margin, on the other hand, is defined as the time calculated by subtracting 6.9 seconds from the time between experiment participant pulling the trigger and the vehicle in question passing the participant. So this 6.9 represents the time required for a typical person crossing a two-lane street, assuming the width of the crossing is, is 24 feet and walking speed is 3.5 uh, feet per second. So we, we use this study as a base and we change, we modify the regression analysis and reduce down uh, the parameters into these three parameters ambient sound level, vehicle velocity at detection, vehicle sound level. And we did some for some assumptions. The wind speed is at uh, 8.5 mile per hour for Orlando downtown area. Uh, and 11 decibel is, is the average modulation and we assume there is no hearing impairment. So we simplify the equation to this equation and we calculate the vehicle sound pressure uh, 
using these two equations for EV it is this equation here and for ice it, it this equation is used for the vehicle sound pressure as I said we, we implemented some sensitivity analysis here uh, we get it uh, there were so many assumptions in this study first the traffic flow rates for EVs and ISAFs are assumed not to vary by month or season. We received the annual average daily traffic count values from Orange County, the government of Florida, belonging to the simulated intersection. Um, there are approximately 20,000 vehicles per day in the north-south direction and east-west direction is 16,000 vehicles per day. We also gathered the pedestrian flow counts we assume some Poisson distribution uh, for the pedestrians who are crossing the roads. Also, a constant ratio for pedestrians who only rely on their auditory detectability and fail to see the vehicle. So, we performed 9,000 consecutive simulations, and each simulation was running for one year. So, this was taking about three weeks on a regular computer. So we had to use uh, a supercomputer. We use uh, UCF Advanced Research Computing Center as the, as the Newton Visualization Cluster. The cluster computer has 10 compute nodes and 32 cores, uh, two NVIDIA GPUs, uh, and you basically get 320 cores and 20 GPUs. The supercomputer accelerated our simulation quite well, so we were able to finish the entire simulation in three hours. So according to the sensitivity analysis results, pedestrian safety comparisons have wide uncertainty ranges between EVs and uh, ISAFs under different ambient sound illumination conditions. The results show that the EVs and ISAFs are both more likely to engage in crashes with pedestrians at night when the illumination level parameter is set to low. Although direct visual detectability is harder at night, auditory detectability increases due to lower ambient sound levels. As high ambient sound levels drastically increase the total number of near crashes for EVs by lowering the chance of their detectability, um, though the number of near crashes for internal combustion engine vehicles also increased considerably. A significant difference is seen here uh, between two vehicle types. In When there is higher ambient sound level, uh, the higher ambient sound level basically increase the number of near crashes for EVs drastically. In EVs, we, in summary, we calculated that we, in, in overall, EVs pose 25% higher risk to pedestrian traffic safety than internal combustion engine vehicles. Uh, we also validated our results. Uh, we did some statistical work. We from use we use online crash history databases. The uh, we first used the Fatal Analysis Reporting System, FARS, uh, and the recorded fatal crashes from 2010 to 2013 were analyzed to validate the simulation results. According to the FARS data, hybrid and electric vehicles constitute less than 1% of the total number of fatalities. Even though both these vehicles have recently gained significant popularity in the market, uh, one of it, uh, the data yielded very really little amount of uh, crashes. Uh, one of the reasons why these vehicles have very few reported incidents can be attributed to the fact that uh, most of crashes regarding EVs and hybrid vehicles cause no or little in injury, since they mostly occur at low speeds when, they, when the vehicles approach to the pedestrians too silently to be detected in time. And the, our 
we collected data in some areas shows that EVs are 2.7 times more likely to collide with non-motorized users and at night time it was shown that pedestrians and bicycles are 4.9 times more likely to be involved in collisions with EVs and uh, hybrid vehicles. So this uh, statistical data was matching our simulation results uh, and this is the basic end of our webinar session. Thank you very much for, for if you have any questions you can uh, use the comment uh, chat, chat box here and you can send me e an email address at nsmyfirstname.mylastnamekaraslan at ucf.edu I can also share my agent base model, uh, the entire analogic simulation model, so you'll be able to basically run and execute it and change the parameters as you wish. Thank you, Ines. So we will give it a couple of minutes to see uh, questions come in. I have a question. Do you know how or how do you envision your findings, the results from this project? Um, do you see any future work coming from it or how do you yes. expect yes. that to inform? Um, probably hold that to put it in the slide. In the future work, we of the we use on in this study use only a micro simulation, a small traffic environment. We can uh, expand this traffic environment to a whole city and use our uh, supercomputer again to simulate uh, the entire city uh, and see whether uh, EVs are actually posing higher risk. Um, and the near crash algorithm was very really simplified here so we could make it, uh, we could include more parameters that could affect the uh, vehicle safe, uh, pedestrian safety. One of the problems was uh, in in the agent base model uh, it was really hard to formalize uh, some of the problems, some of the traffic related issues. It was really hard to uh, formalize the driver behavior. Uh, maybe the driver behavior can be uh, formalized, could be formalized more complex and and would include more uh, input parameters. Um, but definitely we could improve it to with more uh, coverage, not just one single intersection type, but we could in, in, in include different combinations of intersections. Um, this question came in. Could you talk a little bit more about how the micro simulation results match the driving simulator results? Um, and what kind of parameters were used for driver behavior? Mm -hmm. um, so that might be a smaller question. So we didn't have driving simulator. We, we validated the micro simulation results with the well, FARS data, uh, fatal analysis reporting system data. Um, basically, based on this data, EVs are 2.7 times higher, more likely to collide with non-motorized users. And at the night time, uh, pedestrians and bicycles are 4.9 times more likely to be involved in collisions. But to how we reflected the driver behavior Basically, we based the Emerson study here. We modified their regression analysis, and we came up with with a formulation here. Uh, we calculated the sidestepping distance, and then maybe I can show it on my computer now in the paper.
So we basically calculated two factors here. We first calculated the vehicle auditory distance. Uh, this was coming from the regression analysis. And the other uh, was the other uh, function was the sidestepping distance. So we included vehicle speed, perception reaction time, and deceleration rate of the vehicle. Uh, we also in reflected EV drivers taking fewer risk and uh, generally more stay more likely to stay on their speed limit. Uh, so we reflected all these uh, factors in the sidestepping distance and sidestepping distance directly affected number of collisions.